What you doing there? It's the sometimes vlog, yeah, yeah. Oh, it's a vlog that happens sometimes, and sometimes it happens out here on a wonderful ribbon of black tarmac, a wonderful stretch of dirty highway. She's known as the Mother Road, but she knows how to get down and party. I'm talking about Route 66. Oh, that's right. We're back on the world famous Route 66. Did you miss me, baby? I know you, ah, ooh, ooh, it's hot. Oh, she's a hot mama. Today, I've left the cool and wonderful climate of Southern California to head out into the desert towards Arizona on Route 66, currently standing on the side of the road in Newberry Springs here. The sun is getting very low in the sky, and Newberry Springs isn't really that far from Southern California. As a matter of fact, Walter Knott lived here before starting Knott's Berry Farm. He came out here to start a farm out here in Newberry Springs. And you can really see why. I mean, you can see how obviously fertile this ground is for farming. Honestly, a lot of people did come out here, not just as prospectors and miners and stuff, but we're out here in the desert of Southern California trying to start farms back in the day, diverting water from rivers and messing up the ecosystem and whatnot, and uh, to no avail, really, because there are none farms here. None that I can see anyways. Ah, but maybe those old western dreams aren't entirely dead because this place deals still seems to be in business, although closed at the moment, and it's still selling feed. So as crazy as it sounds, it seems that there are a few people still trying to make their living by farming out in the desert, which is both futuristic sounding and crazy sounding. I'm headed that way, east towards Arizona, and I'm not sure how much footage I'm gonna get today, because like I said, the sun's getting kind of low in the sky, it's very late afternoon, and I didn't make it all that far away from Anaheim today. I was up till basically five in the morning, finishing editing the last video, and getting it uploaded, and making sure that it was uploaded. I uploaded two or three times, finally. It was working, because YouTube had a weird problem. You're not, it doesn't matter. I was up really late, got up still pretty early, on a couple hours of sleep, got ready to go, but that crazy Southern California traffic. Just two or three minor traffic accidents led to a, I don't know, hour or two drive out here, turning into a five hour ordeal. I'm sure any of you who have been to Southern California are familiar with those kind of circumstances. But one of the coolest things about Route 66 is whether you're all the way over in Chicago or down here in California near the end, you don't have to go far down that road to see some kind of old abandoned ruins or relics from a bygone era. I mean, I just pulled my Mustang off the interstate over there and I've already found an old abandoned service station right here on the side of the road in Newberry Springs. I was talking to my grandma and she said that she'd gone down Route 66 two times actually, when her family moved to Southern California from Canada in like 1954. And then they went back and did it for vacation, I think in 1955. And she was, oh, see, I thought it was a spider, but it was just a, just a little bit. And she was telling me about how they would go through the desert and a man would come out and charge five cents for a glass of water. I'm pretty sure when she was telling me the story, she meant it to be like, can you believe how expensive that was? But in my head, all I could think of is how they charge, you know, $3.50 for a bottle of water at Disneyland, so I don't think it had the, uh, the same resonance that it once did, that story. I have a lot of respect for the pioneers of Route 66, not just the travelers on Route 66, but the people who came out to places like this, or were already living out here, making a living as miners or doing whatever, and opening up service stations in places like this, because it couldn't have been easy to run a business in the desert where you have to truck in water a lot of times or charge a lot for water. It's ridiculously difficult to get any kind of electricity or sewage or anything like that going on. Look at these old gas pumps inside this abandoned station. How old do you reckon those pumps would be? I like to see the pumps because you can kind of get a sense of the era. And if you look at the shape of this guy right there, that definitely seems pre-1970s to me. I don't know, what do you guys think? It's always hard to tell how long stuff in the desert has been closed, because like ancient Egyptian sites, the desert sort of preserves places like this, doesn't it? It's all dry, there's not a lot of rain and moisture to tear down buildings, and so unless it's in a spot where it can get a lot of wind, it'll last for a long time. Look at that fridge in there. Pretty old school looking, it almost looks old school enough to be the kind that kids would accidentally lock themselves inside, and so there was all those episodes of TV shows where it was like the kid played hide and go seek and locked themselves in the refrigerator and they could have died in there, so I was like, don't ever hide in the refrigerator, kids. I know that, that sounds super crazy today, but that was like a thing. When I was growing up, that was still a thing. Don't ever lock yourself in the refrigerator playing hide and seek. 
you'll freeze. Man, people used to come inside of here back in the day to get their five cent glasses of water or get their old school glass bottle Cokes or whatever it might be on the side of the road. Pretty crazy to think about that stuff. I'm super skeptical when it comes to the paranormal or ghosts or anything like that, but you know how people talk about how ghosts are just leftover energy from another time, like just an impression of something that happened? So when I see places like this, I can almost populate them in my mind with my own ghosts of just people coming by the side of the highway. Can I get the rubber dinosaur dead? No, it's too expensive. We're going, we need to go. We'll go to the bathroom in the next place. This bathroom's too dirty. Pretty crazy. Each one of these places was owned by somebody, staffed by somebody, so each one of these places has stories and of course the visitors all had stories. The holes here look like there would have been some kind of payphone right here. Can you imagine coming to use the bathroom and all the calls that were made on the old payphone way before cell phones in the cars and people calling out to Los Angeles, I'm on my way, I'm gonna be a big Hollywood star, I'm only a few hours from the coast, I've almost made it. What about the families that used to own this place? Do you think they moved on and opened a newer place down the road off the interstate or do you think they still live here in one of these houses? Like oh yeah that was grandpa's old Old service station but you know I got into e-commerce so I was able to get out of the old gas pumper grind. I pulled over initially just to look at the mountains and just to see the sign on deals over there that old fading wooden Newberry Springs sign and it is no exaggeration 111 degrees Fahrenheit on the thermometer right now which is I think 42 or 43 degrees Celsius for all my European friends out there. Anyway it's funny because I pulled over thinking like man I really got to get to somewhere I have to get to somewhere to film something today and then I kind of looked over here and it dawned on me that I'm the one who's always telling people it's not about the destination. It's not about getting somewhere. It's about going somewhere, if that makes any sense. It's about the journey. It's about stopping to smell the sagebrush that keeps tickling your legs, making you think that there's scorpions on you. And it's about stopping to think. So something as mundane looking as this old closed down Chevron station, which I could tell because you can see the faint ghosting of a Chevron sticker right there. Ho ho ho, science detective work, <laughs> right? Also the um, the Chevron the Chevron sign in there. Anyways, even something as simple as this can really be interesting and really transport you if you take the time to stop and really think about it. Does it have any meaning? What does it mean for the people who used to work here? What does it mean for the travelers who used to stop in here? What does it say about automotive culture? What does it say about Route 66? What does it say about our country? These are things like teachers would ask you in high school and you're like, that's, a, that's dumb, why are you trying to make me think? But when you're out here in a historical place, which this is actually a historical place if you think about it, this is an artifact right here. This is history. That kind of creative critical thinking actually starts to make a lot more sense out here in places like this. And without it, honestly, any place could be boring. I have seen people out in Gettysburg, walking around Washington, D.C., or even in France out by the Eiffel Tower, or on Champs-Élysées, or at the Louvre. Heck, I've even seen people out in London on the Jack the Ripper tour, visiting the places where Jack the Ripper committed those heinous, unsolved murders. And they were bored to death. It's not always just the place that's interesting. It's how you think about and interpret the place. So I always say like there's probably stuff in your own neighborhood that you never had any clue was some kind of historical thing or there you was a there was a crazy axe murder there. Some people are into crime stuff or other people are like, "Wow, I didn't know that this crazy poet had lived here or that there was a photographer who lived here and the local library has a whole collection of photographs of what my neighborhood looked like 200 years ago or whatever it is." But seriously, I've seen people at some of the craziest sites in the world looking at the Mona Lisa, talking about Jack the Ripper, walking around in historical sites where there were battles and bloodshed and crazy Crazy stuff going on. Looking bored to death, not wanting to even bother getting out of the car or look up from their phones for more than two seconds because they didn't want to stop and think, man, what was this like back in the day? How did it get like this? What was it like for the people who first came here and tried to make a living? What was it like for the people who tried to keep this business open for obviously a very long time? That's why I like Route 66 so much because it was a ribbon of highway that went from Chicago to LA and brought millions of people from the Midwest and the part of the country that had been settled for 100 or 200 years out to the West to start whole new businesses, there's whole new opportunities and really because with the post-war era after World War II, all that 50 stuff, it was a whole new way of living, a whole new America out here. It was the dawn of the space age, the dawn of the rock and roll age, the transition from old school agricultural farm America, old small, old New England town America 
into that big suburban sprawl with the TV and the two cars and the crazy Elvis Presley swinging his hips around on TV. I mean, even fast food was sort of born on Route 66. The very first McDonald's was on this stretch of highway down there in San Bernardino. I did a video about it once. You can look it up. Anyway, since my last trip, which was across the whole country, I realized that there's a whole bunch of Route 66 within a day or two's drive from my house that we didn't even get to explore. So while everyone else is freaking out about politics or what's gonna happen to Tower of Terror, I've decided I wanna take my Mustang out on the old mother road, see if we can have an adventure or two this week. So buckle your safety belts, kids, cause I have no idea where we're going. And the road could get a little bumpy. I don't know. The sun is going down behind us and the shadows are getting pretty long. Pretty warm out there, 7 p.m., still 110 degrees. But I'm hoping that when I get out towards Arizona, it'll cool down a little since the elevation will be a little higher where I'm gonna be at tomorrow, I hope. Look at all that nothing. It's beautiful. Whoa, 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 whoa. Some of the stretches of road here whew, can be a little bit bumpy. The interstate, whoa, is a little bit over there to my left. I can actually see it out of the corner of my eye, probably like 200 yards away. Whoa, dip. <laughs> I'm really rethinking my decision here. It's just that wherever it's possible, I really like taking what's called the old alignments of Route 66. So the old little stretches of road before they built the interstate highway along the same path. It's nice to get a sense of what the original travelers down Route 66 ah, would have experienced with the old school road conditions not being what they are now, today. <laughs> it's nice to experience that for a little bit. Then it grows a little monotonous. <laughs> See, look at that. There are people living out here. Living out here in the middle of nowhere. What's this? What's this? What's that? Ooh, I love pulling over to see random stuff in the desert. Although I always hope that it's not some sort of hills have eyes trap, you know? <laughs> there's the interstate over there. There's a rest area off the interstate. And then there's the whole lot of bumpy nothing that we just came down now and a whole lot of bumpy nothing up there. But I don't know if you can see it. If you look right here, you'll see a guy out there walking around with no shirt on, with a dog, just walking off into the desert. Hope that dude's got the power of the cobra. Hope he uses the wisdom of the owl. Maybe that's what he's out here doing. Seeking the peace of the desert plant. I just want to take a look at this. Look at this right here. Cafe and motel. Must mean a little further on down the highway here. Probably means the Ludlow Cafe, which is just a little ways down the road. Huh. That sign has seen some better days, man. Look at that. Dude, that is pretty crazy. I don't know if you can see, but there's wires hanging down. And you can see all the holes for the old neon tubes to come out. So at one point, this here, this right here, was one of those old school, classic neon signs out in the desert. Dude, and this one is surrounded by nothing. So if you were coming down the highway at night and saw this neon sign, you were probably freaking psyched. Old school neon sign. And look at this, old school white wall tires. Just like the simulator from yesterday. I don't know, a lot of people are like, man, you're crazy. And I know there's some people who'd feel uncomfortable standing on the side of the road. There's weird shirtless guys down there running around and stuff, looking at this. And maybe some people would think it's boring, but I just think, when am I ever gonna see this? You know, unless I came out here. How would we see this? It's a beautiful thing. Beautiful thing looking at that. All right, moving on. I do actually hope to get to Arizona sometime in this life, so better keep driving. Seriously though, that guy that was walking out here, I see literally no trace of him. No sign of that dude at all. Weird. I do see a lot of lava rock though, so that's neat. Ooh. Geez, I'm glad my mother isn't here. This road is pretty rough and there may or may not be some choice language coming out of my mouth. <laughs> like, uh, what the Heimbach? You know, <laughs> stuff like that. Like, no exaggeration, I've gone down a lot of old alignments of Route 66, but this is like, this is some bad road right here. Like, this isn't the worst part of it, but it's just chunky, meaty stuff. Two or three inch ruts, you know, crazy. It makes me nervous. You know what we should do is we should just cover this all with a time lapse. It'll be easier for you, and it'll be easier for me, and we'll get the heck out of here. Thank goodness I fixed my flux capacitor earlier. <laughs> oh, that's better. Oh, there we go. There we go. Good thing you guys got to ride this way because I'm telling you, there were points where I actually had to pull over and drive on the dirt 
side of the road because it was way smoother and safer than the actual road itself. Oh, ho, ho! salvation! The freeway is here! Whoa! <laughs> oh, the interstate. Um, it's not that I don't like the old alignments of Route 66 and everything, I do enjoy them, but I think until I'm in an area with a little more cell phone reception, I'm gonna stick to the interstate. <laughs> and uh, do that section of California goodness on a future trip. <laughs> well, boy. <sighs> I need a Mountain Dew. Whew, here's a familiar spot. It's Ludlow! You guys might remember Ludlow from the last trip. We checked out some abandoned buildings in town and the old cafe and gas stations. You'll be surprised to know there's not a lot going on in Ludlow. But it is a great place to watch the sunset. Ooh, there we go. Whew. All right. Oh, yeah. There we go. Look at that. Super, super, super gorgeous out here. I mean, the sun just went down over the horizon and it's still 108 degrees, but you know, other than that, super, super beautiful. I was talking to some of the truckers about how rough that stretch of the old part of Route 66 was back there. And they very kindly pointed out to me that from this side, the road is actually closed down there. So if I had kept going down the road, I still wouldn't have been able to come here and I would have had to turn around and go down all those bumps anyways, because for whatever reason, there's no road closed signs on that sign, but I was going down the road that's too bumpy to be open, so. Hashtag adventure. If you go back in my Route 66 playlist, you can see a little more of this town, Ludlow. I went to try to get another soda from the Ludlow Cafe this time and support them, you know, with my patronage, but they are not open this time. I don't know if it's just the heat or the time of day, but no luck. No luck at the Ludlow Cafe this time. But at least I got it on film last time. <laughs> oh, oh, I'm not upset about the Ludlow Cafe being closed. I'm just standing next to a whole truck full of onions. Oh, I wonder if anyone ever sends him hate letters for doing his job. Whew. Well, anyway, the sun's gone down and the day is done. I got a fresh dew from that gas station. I talked to some truckers, so it's time to move on and head towards Arizona. Make sure to subscribe for more video adventures. All my stuff is free, but if you'd like to help out, I got t-shirts, livefast.ipoor.inspiration.com. Also, this thing where you can throw me a dollar a month if you want, patreon.com slash justinscar. I always like to say I'll do at least two to six videos a week. I've never only done two videos per week. I've always done more like three, four, five, six, sometimes seven videos a week. Sometimes we talk about our feelings. Sometimes we talk about bees and insects. Sometimes we run around like fools. And sometimes we watch the sunset in Ludlow. You just never know what you're gonna get on the sometimes vlog in this crazy world. My crazy world of random land. Well, anyway, if you subscribed, I'll see you all a little later. Bye-bye now. Ooh. Look at this. Just listen. Listen to that sound. The sound of idling trucks, side of the highway, and the old public rest area. The sound of the side of the highway in the Southern California desert. A lot of states will have 24 hour security. They'll have little pamphlets available at night. Some of them have little museums and displays in their rest areas. California likes to be a little more minimalist and old-fashioned when it comes to the uh, to the desert here. <laughs> it's uh, it's not creepy or super dark out here at all. No, I'm lying. It's actually super super duper murdery out here <laughs> not that it's actually dangerous or anything there's like about a bazillion truckers over there sleeping in their trucks and there's actually highway workers here and everything there's humans but if you were gonna film a horror movie this would not be a bad location to choose to have a murder huh. oh well you gotta do what you gotta do be right back you guys Ugh. oh my gosh
It was like a thousand degrees in there. I'd like to point out once again, this is in the middle of nowhere. Yet they're still tagging out here. Huh. Who could have done this? I bet it was one of those desert tortoises. Hmm. Hands off, partner? Yeah, right. Well, hands off once you stop tagging our rest areas, tortoise. Oh, snap. If the tortoises are tagging now, you don't think the tortoises could have started gangs, do you? Oh, this changes everything. Now I am scared. I don't want to be alone anymore, you guys. I don't want to be alone. Oh my gosh, whose black car is that? Oh, it's my black car. <laughs> will I make it to Arizona, or will I be murdered by a tortoise gang in the middle of nowhere? Find out tomorrow on the Psalms ah, ah, vlog. Direct from Random Land. See you guys later. In the great beyond? Question mark?